Yes, that's probably the only time we're going to clap today. So, um, welcome to my session. Uh, I'm going to talk about all of the new awesome stuff in Drupal 8 and Twig, which is the theming engine for it. Um, but I would just say right off the bat that I do have a presentation style that for some people is might going to be slightly offensive. If you feel offended, I will say this right now. I am so sorry. <laughs> Good, so that's out of the way. Um, my name is Morten. As you know, uh, it's, it's actually more than Morten. It's um, Morten Birk Heide Jørgensen. And if you are outside of Denmark, people don't count because you say this out. So I'm going now, but just when I'm outside of Denmark, by Morten Birch. The, the problem about Birch, if you look down on your keyboard, can you see how, how easy it is to miss all this? And this is also, so this is why I also think that, well, you know, it's fair that I can bitch and moan about the theme layer, which I've done for the last, let me just think, oh, since a month then I came into Drupal House back in 4.7, that makes it about, what, seven, eight years now of non-stop bitching about the Drupal theme layer. Um, <coughs> but by my last name, I think I'm entitled to that. Actually, what, what I'm going by normally is just more DK. And a lot of people think, thought that, <coughs> DK was actually for the language, you know, for, for, for Denmark, because my domain is more DK. Um, if you just take the DK, there's actually a message that none of you have known about that I've been carrying around here for in the Drupal world for many, many years. It's Div Killer. <laughs> that is the right name for it, because that's been a mission I've had. The idea of how Drupal does stuff, I think, is fundamentally wrong. So I'm on a mission sent from older than four to kill every div I can find. Um, but if you want to follow my dumb stuff, you know, follow my Twitter account, MoldyK, that's my primary communication now. Um, it has everything that's good in life, so it's about metal, getting drunk, um, and Drupal content, and my daughter. Um, so I also run this little company called GeekWare, I have some stickers with me, but that's not going to be the thing we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about, you know, what is it, why is this not working? <coughs> What is actually wrong with Drupal theming um, from a front end perspective? Not from the back end perspective, because you know, you dev guys, you can, you can moan a bit later. Um, but after six or seven years of analyzing and looking into Drupal, I was thinking, okay, what is actually wrong? And I figured out there's two things. Um, we have the divisions. All what we in Drupal call the rich markup. Um, that, that's better than saying piece of shit. Um, and the, the thing is that we have in Drupal had this idea of if we wrap everything in, in, in enough diffs and enough class names, a themer, because a themer only does CSS, right? And for the record, nobody did anything there, like looking at me like I was dumb to the camera. Um, we have this idea of wrapping everything in, in a ton of diffs, so if you just do CSS, you can pinpoint into the exact part of a, of a website. The problem is nobody does that, and, and it was kind of an idea based on how... Uh, do, do you remember CSS Garden? Anybody? That CSS Send Garden, yeah. That was a thing that was hot 10 years ago. The idea was you had one kind of markup, but then with CSS you could change the page completely. Drupal kind of built on that idea. Um, the other thing that is wrong is the CSS overload. Because um, this was... I took... Google Star, and I, I just started up a site where we load 27 files in. Um, and the problem about loading 27 files is that you have no idea where stuff comes from. So it begins to be complicated for what you do. Of course, there's a reason for that, but it's still, as a theme, this is turning into be a little bit of a nightmare. Um, besides of these 27 different files where stuff comes from, we also have this idea of adding in as many <coughs> class names as possible on every field we can find. And this is, um, this is my a little bit of an overreaction, but we actually have at least five class names for each field that comes out of Drupal, including the wrappers, and more of the wrappers, and then the descriptions, and so forth. It's, it is not the way you would write anything out. Um, so, um, that, that boils it down to, we have, we have these two problems. Um, we have the markup, and we have the CSS. Um, <coughs> and of course, you also go ahead and say, well, okay, why are we in this state? <laughs> Who's to blame? How come we, for seven, eight years, have been doing, actually 10 years, uh, have been building websites in a system that you know, some of us think are not built the way we should do it. It's not built on modern standards. It's, 
it's pretty much built on something that might was built 10 years ago. Why is that? Well, I always, always like to figure out who's to blame. And um, as a front ender, I of course start with the developers. Because <laughs> it is always developers' fault, right? Because the developers wrote the code, they put it into CBS back in the days, and um, they did it. So it must be their fault. Um, if I go out with a couple of developers, they will at some point during that night we grab a couple of drinks, they will smack me very hard and be like, yo dude, no, it's the themers' fault. Like, what the fuck? How is it the themers' fault? It's not our front end guys' fault. I mean you 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 just gave us this stuff. Well, here's the thing. Um, uh, we have ended up having this one markup to rule them all. And why did we come to that point? Well, um, so I've been thinking about why did we have this one markup to rule them all. And last year, I went out two years ago, I went to Denver, DrupalCon in Denver. And I was out in the shooting range with, this is WebChick, by the way, and WebChick with a gun. Uh, yeah, yeah, at this point, uh, so we were going out there in a car with a lot of Googlers and a shit ton of guns. And me being a little thing, she I was a little bit. Holy shit, what are we doing here? But I had web chicks sitting next to me in the car and I just began to bombard her with questions. Why do we do this? Blah, 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 blah. Why, why are you being, basically developers, why are you being so ignorant? Why don't you understand our needs? And web chicks said, you know what, um, nobody told us what to do. Me being a Dane and a man and a female, of course it took, I'm not that right. So it took me about a month to figure out what was that. She said, she said nobody told us what to do. Okay, what does that mean? That means that no themer stood up and said, hey developers, you know what we want? We want to have this instead of that. And the reason we want to have this instead of that is because of these things. You know, the way we solve all other logical problems. So we can of course say to the developers, you know, you bunch of assholes because you gave us that shitty markup. We also have to look at ourselves as themers say, hey, god damn it, we kind of dropped the ball. So when we get to look at Drupal 8, it's like, okay, we need to step up a little bit. So, um, I've tried for many years ago with the Pretty Please when I was talking to these reviews. Could we Pretty Please try with better class naming, better, less markup, less this, less that? And it's always to be the patch. Like, okay, fair enough. But Pretty Please doesn't always work. So, um, when we started twig tricking this in, uh, I came up with a new, new word. It's called anger, anger driven development. And anger driven development is you take all the frustration, all the anger, all the Drupal fuck you and your shitty markup anger, and you put that into um, when you're in a closed room with your fellow themes, you bitch and know a lot. When you're outside, you smile to people and try to make stuff good. Anger driven development is actually very much a thing of how we do stuff in the open source. It's also called scratch your own niche. That's just a nicer way to say it. It's, I mean, how many times do we change something because some other idiot didn't do it wrong, right? And that's kind of how we do it each day, right? You look at the code, like, who was the smart who wrote that shit? And you do the git blame, and you see your own name, and like six months ago, that's just how it goes. Like, that's how we work. So we begin to work and figure out what is it that we want to do for Drupal 8. And um, for a lot of us, some of us, we, well, we pretty much have to kill PHP template, but we were not sure. So two years ago, we had the third it was the third of the uh, uh, front-end conferences we did here in Europe. That was the first one called Front-end United because that just, it used to be called Drupal Design Camp. And that sounds, in my, my world, so fucking unsexy as possible. Front-end United, you know you're going to get punched. If you come in there with your uh, the terminal as the first thing, somebody's going to punch the shit out of you. Um, and that was kind of the thing. We want, we want to have a group of front-enders who would take responsibility. So in Amsterdam, we had a lot of talks about what was wrong. At the same time in Amsterdam, well, in Amsterdam, well, we have a bunch of people in San Francisco, um, which was a ton of developers. And what happened was that we sat um, up in Amsterdam um, a whole day, 25 of us, and just figured out what is wrong with Drupal, the Drupal theming system. What is wrong trying to create user stores? So we figured out what is actually the thing we're not doing right and how can we make it better. Trying to pinpoint it, not just going, uh, remove all the markup because that's not that's not a, a, an answer to anything. That's just being a little bitch. Um, but I actually figure out okay, what I want to be able to do is this or that. I don't I don't need to have an API to actually figure. I don't as a thema I should not have to install PHP Storm to figure out what goes on. I mean I should just open up the theme files and look at them and get my job done. So issues like that. So at the same time in San Francisco we had chicks with John Holbein and Jen Lambs on a thing like 25 people sitting there who were just 
try to take everything we came up with from the theme perspective and said, okay, let's look at that from a developer perspective. What is our biggest pain point? The biggest pain point from the developers is, oh no, you can put my SQL queries inside of a theme. And themers do that. What the fuck? Which theme do that, by the way? I've not touched SQL since I came into Drupal. There's a reason I do Drupal sites. So I don't have to touch that shit. Because when I do a query, I do it so badly. Oh, you. Mikkel has seen it once. And he's like, oh, dude, you're doing it wrong. Um, anyways, what we figured out was that PHP template <laughs> is not the thing that was used anymore. And there was a reason for that. The simple reason is that it, there was too many holes, too much crap. Um, and it didn't work out, and they figured out, hey, we're going to use Twig instead. It's a little bit, it's a French, it's built by this French dude, so it's a little bit elegant, a little bit <laughs> sweet. Um, and, and pretty much you just said, that was actually the commit we got the next morning. We went, we were in Amsterdam, so we ended up partying all night the next morning from San Francisco. They go, hey, how about we using Twig? The same day, actually, there was a dude who had a session on how Twig worked, and we were a bunch of themers like, wait a minute, does this mean that we have to take every, uh, function that we have, every theme function in Drupal, we have to rewrite that into a template file? Yes, it does. We like that. And that was pretty much, that's the reason we have Twig into Drupal. And the developer said, you cannot put SQL queries inside of Twig, inside of the theme layer anymore. No, you cannot do that. We like that. High five. Let's go with that. So I'm very proud to say that that's the amount of bad thought we've got into getting Twig into Drupal. But, you know, that's how sometimes it goes. Um, so by changing system, the first thing we figured out is, okay, we need to actually make a plan instead of just coding. Now, if you just begin to code, 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 you're not going to end, you're going to end up with the same shit, just with curly brackets instead of PHP prints. We didn't want to do that. So, um, we actually used a, a ton of like sprints, like, uh, on different camps to figure out what is it that we want to do. And one of the first things we actually wanted to drop was the what if, what if, what if, what if. And the what ifs is the, well, what if I have this obscure situation where I need to do this, this, and that? You know, you do everything in a, in a way of, of we need to solve every problem with the markup that comes out. I mean, that's why we have an ID on every node. How many are actually using an ID for a node for anything in the front end? Quick raise of hands. <coughs> Nobody raised their hands. We have an ID on every node at all. That is because somebody said, well, what if I at some point want to be able to theme a specific node, they were making the title red. But how about we remove all of these obscure what ifs and say, what if we just take care of the 80% and make sure our theme system is flexible enough so when you have that edge case, you can do that. Um, Besides that, oh, somebody's told Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> somebody's looking very ashamed. Uh, another thing we talk about, like, hey, let's not dumb it down. Let's drop this crap about, oh, the theme is too dumb to understand what goes on. So we will just give him the content variable because then he's not going to be confused by how it looks. Or the menu. I love theming menus, right? Menus is a, it's a class piece <coughs> because you've got these well, four different functions that rolls into each other, but we have split it out in different templates. What the fuck? Nobody can figure that shit out. Anybody here, any developer understands how the menu works? For the camera, nobody makes their hands again. Um, no, so so we've been trying, we have had this idea of, oh, the themer do not understand how complex complexity or if else, how they work. So um, we're going to hide it from them. How about we stop doing that and instead actually show us what goes on? No, don't dumb it down. The are not that dumb. We know we're dumb, but not that dumb. Um, so basically, our idea was to start with, start with nothing. We, we don't want to solve all the problems. We want to provide tools so we can actually find stuff. Uh, visibility, consistency, and don't dumb it down. That's kind of the ground principles that we have been, uh, we, we wrote them down to figure out. Especially when you get into the issue queue and you begin to discuss things, a lot of times you forget which way you're going because then it's like, oh fuck, I use that class all the time, or I'm using, I'm working this way. If you have a, an overall perspective which way you're going to go, it's way easier when you actually get into the code. Um, but all that is good. So this, this, this is kind of the principles of why, how we ended up with this trick thing. Um, now let me um, please show you where we're at right now. So, first of all, um, <coughs> Drupal 8 is going to be in straight up HTML5. No more HTML4 crap. HTML5 straight up, nice. We're going to have header and footer text and all that stuff. So we can begin to have pages that look like this. You know, the way the rest of the world writes websites and not how Google does it today. Um, 
Another thing that we have taken the decision on is that you will it will not support IE6, not support IE8, IE7, and it will not support IE8. <laughs> and that is true, an epic, epic win. And not that, because we don't support these browsers anymore, we can clean up so much of our clouds. We don't have to use to have odd and even anymore, and first and last, because we can do that with CSS selectors. To me, that was like the, when I found this gift, like, this was my reaction for that day. Um, <laughs> Pretty much, I'm actually pretty sure that when Drupal 8 is going to come out, we're not going to support IE9 anyways. <coughs> so, um, another thing we've been trying to do here is, um, I'm just going to show you this one. Um, so this is this is the install page right now, and how it looks. This was uh, a shit ton of work to get it to work like that, but as, as you can see, it's the the way that the markup is written now is has been changed a lot, and oh, Somebody wrote something about responsive in my, my, my session here. I'm not going to talk about responsive at all, because to me, that's just CSS magic stuff. I'm talking about markup and the tools make it work. But if you begin to look at this, you see this? Body class install painter, it do not have eight different fucking class names on it. This is beginning to look like something you would actually write. This is how Drupal 8 looks the first time you get open it. And yes, I judge websites how their markup looks. I do view source because that is what I do. I know I'm, I might want to be a little bit special on that, but oh, all right. So, um, uh, another thing we're, we're about to remove is all the bad practices we have. So, so the idea we're talking about, we have a patch in right now that's actually removing that out. Um, and here's a funny thing that happens in an issue queue when you discuss these things. We were actually taking the ID and was changing that, moving that into a class, because in our Drupal minds, we're so used to thinking about a node has an ID. Um, <coughs> but it's going to die, uh, which I look forward to. Um, the Drupal CSS, you know, this is how the body class looks right now. We have an HTML class, because you need an HTML class for your body to tell Drupal website. It's, it is actually hard to open down into the theme of the function. And this is back to the nobody told us what to do. That's why we need themes. How many themes do I have in this room? Good. I need you all on deck, by the way, because right now we're not that many. Because we don't want to see this kind of shit getting into our work environment in the future. Right? It's not their Drupal. It's our Drupal. It's also the developer's Drupal. But it's me who's going to work at the end of the day. So don't put this stuff in. We have one side, but we have all kinds of crap. I mean, in Drupal, how about we figure out what we want to have in there instead? How about we actually sit down and discuss and see what is it that we need out of the box? Because whatever decision we are taking right now, in three years, that's what we're going to work with. Um, now, the CSS structure now in Drupal 8 is, has been changed a lot. There is actually a real CSS guide, a code standard for how CSS is going to be built. And it's going to be built on the SMAX standards and BIM. People know what SMAX is? Uh, kind of, okay, Smax is a, a, it's an, uh, go out and search for it. Uh, <laughs> it it's, it's, it's an awesome documentation of, of how to organize your CSS. It's, it's one of the first real takes on an idea of how to separate your CSS. Uh, BIM is more of a naming standard. You can agree or disagree upon it. The thing is, we have a code standard now, so we're going to follow it. Um, and we're not gonna, those kind of discussions is, is, is taken. Um, CSS. Um, we used to have the bad naming scheme. We now have another uh, one that we, we it's personally approved by yours truly after a four hours discussion with me and John Alden in, um, in Sydney last year. The problem with this picture, by the way, is that it's really easy to remove all the things that's standing here and then you can do memes of it. And there's always, mm -hmm. already now a meme floating around with Bootstrap and me in it. So, um, but. Um, we used to have the bad naming scheme, so our CSS files would be either based on admin or theme name. Um, it has been it's been changed a little bit to reflect into the SMAX terminology. Um, remember this note ID one eight eight seven nine two two. You can read more about it. Um, all of these slides, by the way, are, are, are going to be up on GitHub. Uh, I'm going to publish the the address when I'm, when, on the last slide, so you can find it. Um, <laughs> but. Another thing in Drupal is you remember the first time, the very first time you came into Drupal and you wanted to install a theme and you found that theme folder mm -hmm. and you put your theme in and then everybody shouted, you are doing it wrong! And you're like, why am I doing it wrong? It says themes. No, 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 you cannot put it in there. In Drupal 8, we have done a revolution. 
This is my theme, this is my Drupal site. Call is where all the modules live. Themes is where my themes live. <laughs> I know it's crazy talk, but that's, it was, and when I did that the first time, I felt I was doing something wrong. It was dropping my right for self theme in there and seeing it just working was a really, really freaky experience. Um, you can still put your themes in size, size slash, all slash, whatever, if you want to do that. Um, but we've cleaned, moved one of the dumb things. Um, another thing is that now that all theme, all theme functions is a file, uh, we're actually going to enforce a little bit more on, on the module. So uh, if you look, in, if you want to find the theme, uh, theme function or theme, folk, theme file now in Drupal 8 for a module, you go into call, you go into modules, say I'm going to find my block, and I have to go into templates. And that's where the, the, the template file is going to be. So they're always going to, if you can hear, so you can actually you can do a grip on that stuff. And you have it, we have a simple file structure where it always lives. And that's just how it's going to be. It's the same thing when you write your modules. You have to do this. I am so sorry you cannot do a theme function anymore. <coughs> no, you have to do a template file so we can work with it later. Um, okay, that's all good though. A little bit of like, file structure and refine my stuff. One of the other things that was a pain in the ass in Drupal 7 was figure out where do stuff come from. We could install um, what's called Develop Themer. You know, that wonderful module that put span tags all over your site and broke it and made you hate life and you could not get back and it was just, why are we doing this? So in Drupal 8 we were told about, hey, how about we use a little bit of common sense? What is it that a thema does 24-7? Use source. How about we put the data in there? How about we actually do that? I mean, it, it's crazy talk. <laughs> so if, if, when I'm looking at a template today, um, this is a... Uh, um, of markup that's a little bit old, but it's still too late. So I'm looking into this. I'm like, okay, where does this crap come from? Which it still looks like crap, right? But it's like, where does it come from? I can't find that. Well, if you go into a settings PHP file and you <coughs> go down and says settings trick debug and set that to true, all of your worries will be done. This comes out. And what does this actually do? Let me see if I had a bigger picture. Here we go. So what it tells me now, it says theme debug Call the note. Aha! I am now in the note. Yes. Um, file name suggestion. We don't call it theme hook suggestions anymore because that's not what we, it's a file name suggestion. This is suggestions to file names. You take that file you want to copy, copy it over, give it a new name. Now you have the variations. We give you right out of the box the, your note. If it's a view, I have a note. That has view, front page, page one HTML, view front page HTML, note dash three HTML, note dash article. These are the different name suggestions I get. Oh, and by the way, it also tells me where the template comes from. So as you can see here, themes, food for sale, templates, note. This is from my, my own little theme. So it actually tells me directly up the box, where do the stuff come from? So no more using six hours trying to figure out where did the crap come, came from. Um, and that will actually make, so I know it's, as, as, a, as a themer in Drupal 7, I have a certain level of job security because nobody understands what goes on, but this just makes our life a little bit easier. <coughs> this is, by the way, just to mention it, stolen directly from my theme, the mothership. I am thinking about doing a lawsuit against Google because what's the meaning of this? Uh, if you want to have that stuff in Google 7, you can actually get it, by the way. The problem about the mothership is not that's not written that good. Uh, in Google 8, it's, gonna, it's, it's written the right way because it's built in. Um, I did it in a, in a sloppy, sloppy way, but it's the same principle. Um, <coughs> but, as I said, it's ripped to all the theme functions. And I am so sorry, developers, that you cannot do a theme function anymore where you can yank in a bunch of hard-coded markup that makes my life miserable. I am very sorry for that. Um, we could have a moment of silence to just move on, but that's just how it's going to be. Um, this also means that I think I really didn't understand about trick first. It was it was compiled files, right? What does that mean? Until because I'm a thinker, I figured ah, it's the same thing I do when I do SAS. It just takes my template files and then my magic is do something and then it puts it out. Um, I have been told, and if anybody want to know about that, and apparently it creates some PHP object that PHP then writes or reads or whatever. I honestly I don't care. I still get this from a theming perspective, not from a developer perspective. There is a lot of information about that other places, so you can read up on that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to rant about this whole thing about 
who could cheat me on my SQL data into a theme. Mm. This is, by the way, when, when I do a database try and select from users, this is how I would do it. If this is the right way, right? <laughs> okay, from the record, no. This is how, when I see markup like this, it feels like that. So for a theme, every time you, if you see this stuff, that is how the markup in Drupal feels to us. Just to let you know, developers, this is how we feel. Um, so besides all of these like really fundamental things, we changed another thing. Uh, try to find all the pain points, like branding and logo, which for nine or 10 years have been hard-coded into the page, the page template. Um, you know, where you have all this crap written in. Well, what we're do doing now is, it is now a blog, so you can actually move it around. This is cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is cool. It is kind of one of the small things you're like, why can't I move my logo anywhere? Oh, no, no. You, it's, we're going to do the same, by the way, with the uh, uh, main navigation and soft navigation that's hard coded in as well. Because it has no place there. If you want to do a hard, complete hard coded theme, or we're actually thinking about being able to do that directly from Twig, but that, there's another reason for it. But it, you cannot have this mix match. We're, now we're cleaning everything up. Anyways, we can just as well do that. Um, so, let's actually try to look at how Twig looks. Um, in PHP, this is a comment, you, know, you do print foo. <laughs> in PHP template, this is a comment, you curly brackets, a hashtag, hashtag curly brackets, that's the comment. And foo is two curly brackets, and two curly brackets, and just the name, and it prints it out. That's the trick. Done. <laughs> okay, there's a little bit more to it. Um, <laughs> so. Here's, here's one of my favorites, and I, by the way, really look forward to be in Germany to do this, because one of the things I've never understood is when you do you know, a, a print in Drupal, you go, uh, if you want to print a specific variable, you go print and foo bar, you have that unt thing. And it's the first time I saw this unt, I was like, why is the Germans in my, what are they doing in my? <laughs> I didn't call them the Germans, god damn it. Um, I, I later learned unt means undefined. And which is like, okay, thank you, Drupal. So if I have a website that did not, I didn't start by mo doing multilingual and I read out all the variables for it, and now we added in the multilingual stuff, my theme does not work anymore. Thank you, Drupal, for that. So unless I put unch here, it would not work. And then you have like these, is it, is it a, is it, is it a variable, is it an object, it's still, you just, it is a pain in the ass to find, figure out how to get the value out. What we do here in, in and Twig instead we go foo dot bar dot bass dot done with done this shit. <laughs> what you do is instead of going and figuring out trying to see my way, is this an object, what is it actually? By magic, Twig just goes through, you just do it with dots notation. So you don't have to understand what it is anymore. You can just get it out. And I know from a developer perspective, no, you need to understand the data. <laughs> Fuck off, I need to get my deadline done. That's what I need. <laughs> um, another thing is you have this, the bar. Uh, uh, we can still do um, a call into an array by uh, going this way. And we still have, to, there's like a little k-batch around Drupal 8 right now um, with the hashtag objects and stuff, but we're going to get into that later. Um, and another thing we also have, we have functions, which is a percentage, so curly, curly check, curly bracket, the, the thing about this sign is in Danish, it's called a tubo clam, and tubo is, is a beer sign. Um, of course, I'm Danish, so uh, it's trying to figure out remember what it was called in other languages, kind of hard. Um, if you want to do a simple if else, you know, in Drupal, we, in PHP templates, we would do if foo, you know, print var, end if. Um, in Twig, it's if foo, var, end if. Um, and it gets even better. Um, if you have, let's say we have a loop of data. The only thing you need to understand about a loop is like for user and users, and then you can put user that usually. That is the only thing you need to understand. Mm -hmm. And if you just understand this, you can print out anything in Drupal mm -hmm. 8. That's the only thing you have to learn. Which for me was like, holy shit, this is gonna be exciting. I can begin to focus on markup and CSS again. Uh, if you wanna loop stuff, every time you do it, if you just think, hey, I'm gonna get an array with a lot of data in, I'm just gonna loop it. Well, you can taste on each of them. You can say, how long is this loop? Is it my first loop, my last loop, uh, the index, um, no, the count of it? So I can count on the loop, say, the second loop, the third loop, the fourth loop. Um, do 
do small little elements of that or like tasting on it. And when you look at it, uh, when I first read out on the documentation on Twig, Fabian, whatever, whatever, friend's last name, what his name is, he came out with this like, really bold statement that I was kind of like, holy shit, you're an American French fuck. Because he said, well, if you cannot do it with Twig right out of the box, you're doing it wrong. I was like, dude, you have, you have set up big balls by saying that. Um, and then by working you know, a couple of hours with Twig, I was like, holy shit, you can actually pretty much do whatever you want, because it's about structuring the data the right way. Um, Another thing is, let's say you want to do, in, in today in PHP template, if you want to do a count or something for a class name, uh, we would have to go and do PHP stuff and then and add that into a variable. So well, if I want to do a variable inside of, of a Twig template, I go with the comment that says set. So set foo, and then I would do a count, count dash the loop index, which is the number, in set, and then I would print foo, and it would give me this. So it's, you know, these kind of small operations is built directly in, which makes it really, really easy for us to do these things. Um, another thing is that we have a filter. Filter command is, if I want to do uh, you know, filter upper, is uppercase. So these kind of like small manipulations. Um, filters all can also be done with a pipe. So and it's basically you have a variable like foo, and you want to do stuff to foo. Um, so if I have my, this is my name, I want to strip tax from it, and I want to make it a title, so it's a that M is going to be big. So I take the variable name, I strip the tags, and I make title out of it, and it gives me this. Done. Quick and easy. I mean, and in PHP, you can do it pretty much just as easy. It just looks awfully. This, to me, looks really, really sweet. Um, so <coughs> let's roll into it and look into it at how a theme actually looks. So me being a man, um, I created a theme called Ultrasil. <laughs> And Ultrasil is, um, for the Danes and for the Icelandic in the room, we know what Ultrasil is. Ultrasil is the tree of life. It's the most powerful tree we have in the Norse mythology. Because when I build it, as, this is where I should not do jokes with, with wood, got wood and twig, right? It's kind of dumb. Yeah. Um, it's about finding the biggest tree I could find uh, in the forest. And Ultrasil is kind of as big as bad as it can get. Um, if you follow, it, it was, the reason I actually started creating that was like, wait a minute, there's no themers right now, there's six months ago, that working with Drupal from the theme perspective in Drupal 8, we're all, all just like, trying to make it work. So I began to do a theme where I experiment with it. If you download it, I will warn you right away, it will break everything, because it's, I sometimes update it on it, it was just a place to have, for me to have a playground. Um, and I'm, I think about 29 commits behind of actually pushing up, which I need to do, it's gonna happen. Um, but by beginning to do a theme very early on, I can also figure out how the structure actually works and how you, know, you come to Drupal 7, how is Drupal 8 going to work. So we're still having the html.html.twig file. All template files in, in Drupal now is going to be called something twig, and that's just how naming convention is. That HTML thing irritates me personally. I'm just like, why do we call it .twig? But there is reasons for that, and I don't know why, and I don't care. <laughs> But we have an HTML file, and then we have the page, and then we have the region, and then we have the blocks, and then we have the nodes, and then we have a field. So the file structure, you know, the way that Google works, is exactly the same as Drupal 7. Same thing with the theme hook suggestion, or the file suggestion is the same thing. We're taking the stuff that works in Google, that we have been building on for a lot of years, and reusing that, because we don't want to redo everything just because. Um, so the info file in Drupal 7 looks like this. Uh, you have your regions and your style sheets and you know, your removing style sheets and stuff. In Drupal 8, it looks pretty much the same. Okay, so it's, it's not big and, big and scary. You have your name. Is you're, the, you're missing the .yml? Ah, oh, god damn it, yes. There was always, always some smart ass in the room. Let me present <laughs> uh, it is. It used to be, um, the info files used to be in our own fucked up info language thing, now we're using it in YAML. So it should, there should be a YML. Don't write it J-A-M-L, which I did the first time and developers shouted at me. Uh, kind of still work. Anyways, back to the essence. Uh, have the name, you have the type you put in, it's a theme, fair enough. Description, uh, the packets, it's core, and it's too late. And then I have my style sheets. I have style sheets for all. For print, style sheets removed. Oh, 
Style sheets removed. Ooh, what is that? Well, let's look at that. Um, style sheets, so you, if, if anybody remember in Drupal 7, when you want to remove something, you can do the I then did the fuck off and die technique, um, which is called an FOAD. Um, that is, if you call a well, you remove a CSS file from Drupal. You just define that as a, as a file that's built in your own theme, and Drupal is too dumb to figure out that the file is not existing, so it forgets about it. That's, um, somebody thought that was a bad practice, so instead we now have style sheets removed, so we can actually just write in the files we're not going to use, um, which is beginning to be nice. These are like the small things we're trying to change in the right way. Um, if you still love PHP template, uh, you can still have it in your theme file. Um, you can put it in as an engine. Um, I don't know why we're still having it around, but it's not worth taking the file for. Um, yeah, as I said, it's, this is built directly in. So in Google 7, we would, we would do something like calling all the, the, the files we don't want to have in, and Google forgets about them. In Google 8, we just kill them all. By the way, it's not a hidden trick anymore. It's actually just a documentation standard that we have, and it's built in. Um, in Google 7, you, you did a region, you did if page footer, and then you did print render page footer, because um, we're rendering that element. In Google 8, we're going to do if page dot footer, then page dot footer. So we're using the same syntax. So the syntax here is really, really, really easy to understand. Um, if we have a block, so let's say here we have a, um, a this is how a block out of the box looks. But you know, if you go in and take my block system menus, we all know that it should have nav tag on instead of the evil evil div. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it works the same way. Same way you can like, split up attributes, we're gonna come into that. So <coughs> the way and the way you're gonna overwrite the template is you go in, you take your default suggestion, you can figure out what it's called, and then you can just override it. Um, we have another thing called replace. And now it begins to be a little bit sexy. This is a Drupal thing we are built in. Um, no, this is not, actually not, sorry, that's not a Drupal thing, it's a normal thing. So let's say here I have my, my block, and it has all these classes coming out, block, 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 blah, 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 because Drupal, and I need another block because my module does that. And I'm sitting there like, dude, you're putting in a class name that I actually made red, so now my block is getting red, and I don't want to rebuild all my classes just because of your module. How do I remove that? Well, so in, in here now, what we can do, we have the attributes we also had in Google 7. Um, I can split up my attributes by saying attributes.class, and then uh, I can also go attributes.role. Um, so I can split up these, these attributes that comes up for, for a wrapper. And then on that one, I can, actually, I can go out and I can, I can remove the things that will you know, remove block, and it will remove the block as a class name. A small, simple like variables we can, we can take in. Uh, the attributes is, why is this, uh, it's, okay, um, so normally you do attributes like this. Don't think about these. I don't know why they're coming in. I'm using the reveal as a, as a slide thing. as some JavaScript funky stuff. I have no idea why they came in. But you can split up attributes by going attributes for class and then attributes. And the, the magic thing here is that um, whatever you printed before you printed attributes, Google forgets about, so you don't print attributes out twice. Um, there is though a patch in right now where we're going to do it a little bit different, so we don't have magic anymore in Google. Mm -hmm. We have a module for that. <laughs> God damn it. There is, there is a module called magic, which is pretty magic. <laughs> the maintainer is sitting over there. Um, so let's say, uh, and the, the reason that we can split these up is to say I want to add foo as a class to an object, <coughs> to an element. Well, I take out attribute, just take out the class, and write my class um, thing. I put foo in, and I'm done. I don't have to do a pre-process to get a specific class name in. I know in Google that sounds like black magic because you have to do a pre-process because then my why why do I have to do a pre-process? There's there's no real reason for that. Um, so this is all good, this is all like dumb theory. So let's say, for the example here, I'm a Fima and I'm working with a shitty company. <laughs> that happens. Um, and shitty company has a, a designer who's an idiot. And what happens is that, you know when you do a really bad project that's waterfall? 
So, um, you know, the client signed off with the designer and they're all agreeing on how it should be. The developers are all signing off on it and then you are the last person in, 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 in the waterfall and they say, well, fix this. And you're like, fuck me. This, this is gonna take a month to get done. Um, so if you get something that says, well, you know, on the, on the tags for this specific note, I wanna do this. I wanna have the number of tags, you know, three tags, colon, and then I wanna have my, all of my terms printed out. You need to comma between each of them and then a dot at the end. And then the second of these, uh, you know, it needs, the second of the terms need to be green and italic because I like that. And you're like, <laughs> what the fuck? And you're sitting in Google, sitting like, ah, oh, shit. So, there's probably a module for that. <laughs> so you begin to install a module to get this done. And you, again, it, you begin to work in this obscure way where like, wait a minute, if I just wrote the HTML for this, it would take me, for what, 10 minutes. And now I'm like, I'm four hours down, I've installed a module that's called something crazy, I'm trying to figure out each thing, I'm doing like these obscure class handlers, like CSS stuff to make it work, and it, it does not make sense. Or well, let's look at this and how we would do in Drupal 8 instead. So this would be the markup I would have, you know, span with three tags in, you know, my, my tags in, my class is called the designer is an idiot, you know, that's called green and italic, and I would be done with it. So that would be the thing I would do. Well, all and behold. So here's my note. So I take my note template. And I go content.field text. Con content.field text. That's where my field text lives. Then in my content, I say content without field text. So now when I print out the rest of the content, it does print out the text. I've separated the two. But if you later on put more stuff into your, into your note, you know, more fields, you don't break it. So we don't fuck with the developers or the site builders but we can separate the stuff. So now I have that thing separated out. Um, and you can do that on, on all of the different uh, variables we bring up. So you have that, you know, a thingy, and they'll go without thingy, and then you can print the other thingy. Simple as that. Um, okay, then I have, you know, I have all this data coming up, fair enough. So in my, in my field, dash dash field dash text um, template, which I can find by looking at my source, yay. Um, <laughs> I go for Delta item and items. Honestly, I don't really understand what this means, but I don't have to understand it. This is the beauty of this. Um, and I go, dude, let me set a class to this. Because besides of the, the, the company being idiots, the designer being an idiot, they also want to support IE8. Just to make my life easy. Because that's how life is. So I also need to do a count on it. I can just I can't just resolve on that. I have to add more classes in. So I do a cycle where I say, okay, give me an odd and even and on this delta, which is kind of like shift back and forth all the time and also give me a count where I take the loop, this is the whole loop I'm doing, give me the index and you know, in this, this thing. So now I have a class I can set in and then print the item and the int loop and it gives me this and only this, nothing else than this. Sweet. Well, so I have now my tags versus tag. You know, they want to figure out if they're one tag or two tag, tags, 25 tags. So in my loop, if I'm in the first part of my whole loop that prints out all of these variables, I would go, okay, if the length is uh, above one, you know, add in loop length and using tags, else use tag. Oh my God, the developers in here saying, you're using logic in your mm. <laughs> Yes, I am. Because this is, this, we are now down these like very, very small elements where it does not make sense to put this in the process, for fuck's sake. It's gonna take an hour and a half to get that in. Now I can just get it done. Um, and it will give me this, you know, three tags, nothing more. Um, if I wanna add a class name on my second tab, you know, I have my whole loop thing. I have loop first, they have loop second. Else if loop index equals two. Okay, then I'm gonna add in the designer is an idiot and my rest of my class, and it gives me this. Done. That is all there is to it for, in Drupal 8 for theming. Things that was a pain in the fucking ass to theme in Drupal 7 that we would pretty much be like, how do we do that? You can just, you just take the data and write it. It took me about 15 minutes to learn the syntax and to understand it. And if I can understand that, it's pretty much gonna take you about two and a half minutes to figure that out. Um, so if you take, this is like the whole, whole template for it. Um, I mean, that's all there is to it. That's how my template will look. 
You can look at it and you can understand it. I have, this is real code, by the way, people. Those people here sitting looking at me like I'm lying to them. This is not a lie. I'm not fooling you. It's real. Um, another thing we have now on Twig, Jesus, um, is a Twig block. You know, because we need more blocks. A Twig block is a very magical thing. Um, <coughs> a Twig block is a place where you and your template define a region that you can exchange easy. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's say I have my front page, and on my front page, I want to, in my page template, I want to exchange a certain bit, but only on a certain, on a, on a specific page, uh, specific condition. So let's say if I'm on my front page, I want to add in a certain region, like, welcome to the front page, kind of thing. You want to put that region in. Um, so what I do in Drupal Trick, now in Drupal and Drupal 8, I go, well, define a block and do an end block, if I do that, that will make my magic this thing exchangeable. Um, then I can go in my, my theme hook suggestion and taste that and say, okay, page front, fair enough. In my page front, so in my page trick HTML file, I have my header block and I go change me if I'm on the front page. Then I do the thing that's called an extension, or extent, not an extension, sorry, but an extent. So I extend on that, that page, I give it the whole path. So now Twig understands, okay, if I'm on the page that Twig on uh, oh, God damn it. Um, then exchange that, this part, the header block, with that part in the header block. Um, and it will give me this. So if I'm on a normal note, I have this. If I'm on the front page, I have that. <laughs> so now we can begin, instead of you having 25 different uh, page sections, you just want to have a page and you're going to have all your markup and you have a simple thing you want to exchange. Let's say it's a logo or something simple you just want to exchange. You define a header block or a, a trick block inside of that and just exchange. You can do that with all your template files, by the way. So if you have a field that in some obscure condition needs to figure that out, you can do that as well. And we go, the way we're going to detect on them is back to our theme suggestions. So the way you always will think is like, okay, how can I exchange it while well, I look at my source and boom, the data is right there. <sighs> Just saying. So on the next level of awesomeness, because I'm here in a, in a country that doesn't speak English as first language, well, you know, translate is a thing we always have to work with. And in Drupal 7 and up until three months ago in Drupal 8, translate was still that T tag with a lot of things in it and variable, and it was a pain in the fucking ass to write and you with it. It was not nice. This is how it used to look. Oh, and behold, what did I do now? God damn it. Motherfucker. Here we go. <laughs> so, what we have now is that is the trans thing. And trans is like oosh, 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 trans. It's translation. So translation start and translations end. So um, everything I put in between here will be translated. So you don't, if you have variables or stuff you want to put in, this is a, was a slide I had for when I did the talking to you, just, just to tell the Swedes to go fuck themselves because I'm a baby. Um, but to go back to it, it's, this is how we're going to do translations in the future. And if you have variables, you just put them all in there. It's nice and simple and you don't, don't have to stab yourself in the other eye with a fork. Um, it sets responsive in my, I don't know who put it in my, uh, in, in the talk here. Actually, there's a thing, because we now have CMI. You know, in Google 7, if you have break, breakpoints is installed right now in Google 8. Um, and the thing that, that always been a, been a pain for me when I'm doing themes is, you know, I have my theme set up. And I have a design, and that design has images that set to a certain size. Um, we now have CMI, and uh, CMI is like configuring management. Um, I didn't have time to put the slides in. Uh, I did a very short video of it. But in Google 8, what you can do now in your theme, you can uh, you can take image images, image sizes that you have predefined as a config. You can put that inside of your theme. So when you install your theme, those configurations are going to be installed in the Google site. When you try that, you will smile as a little pretty boy because I was like, <laughs> uh, it's one of the things we have like also pushed in that's coming in. So it is going to be responsive. But all of this stuff, we need heroes. We need more front-end heroes because at this point, you know, the 
the, the trick army is, is these guys. Uh, and, and Jen is kind of doing another thing right now. Kosh and Joe is sitting up in, in Canada and I think I'm sitting here. Ruben the Spaniard is sitting over there. He's in Sweden. Mark is sitting somewhere down in Texas. Fabian X is somewhere in Germany. Hope to come in. Mark is sitting in Minnesota. This is kind of the core army at this point who's trying to like move this forward. I think I'm the only dude still standing since we started this in Amsterdam. So um, to sell it to you, the mortality rate of the trick team is very high because it's a <laughs> ton of work. But you know, no guts, no glory. Um, the thing is that, that we're, we're taking pretty much and rewriting everything from the ground up based on how we as front-end developers, themers, designers, want us.